Our newly adopted family Christmas tradition is to build a massively over the top Christmas light display. This year we're expanding our display with some new elements and I'm sharing it with you guys. Last video we built some new mini trees that are a core part of our display but we want to add some elements I've not seen before. If you've not seen the mini tree video you might want to go check it out first. While trying to decide what else to add to the show this year I started looking around at lighting designs I like. I found myself loving these uplights that seem to be common in architectural and landscaping lighting. Lighting the underside of a tree's canopy gives a really cool effect and I wanted to add some of this to our display. Some googling quickly revealed that you can get RGB floodlights that use the same protocol as the pixel lights we're using for the rest of our light display. They're 10 watts a pop and run on 12 volts and are pretty damn bright so should be nice and visible through the tree's canopy. The next problem I needed to solve to get my up lights is that my parents house where we put on our light show doesn't actually have any trees to up light but you know who does have trees? The council. I reached out to the council to ask if they'd let me put some lights on their trees. The person on the phone was lovely but she didn't know who to ask. I was promised a call back but I never heard back from them. So as far as I'm concerned that's pretty much permission ask forgiveness not permission something like that. Obviously I can't damage the trees so I needed to come up with a way to attach these floodlights, a WLED controller and a battery to the trees temporarily without damaging them at all. Some quick research revealed that the common method for accomplishing this is with some kind of strap that you tighten around the tree holding your lights and equipment against the trunk and firmly in place. So I decided I could build my own version of that. Sometimes the best way to design is just copy someone else. Once my lights arrived, I set to work on modeling them up so I could design some kind of mounting system. I decided on three floodlights per tree and we'll use two of these cam lock straps to hold them on the tree itself. I opted not to use the included yokes on the lights and instead designed a 3D printed mount that replaced the yoke entirely and roughly matched the tree's diameter. The angle of the lights is adjustable and I'm using the factory mounting points to attach them. I'll be printing these out of PETG which should last well enough for the two months or so they'll be outside. But if you wanted these for year round permanent installation you probably want to use something else. Which brings me to the sponsor of this series, PCBWay. PCBWay offers all kinds of manufacturing services, everything from PCB production and assembly to CNC machining, sheet metal cutting, or even metal 3D printing. A CNC machine version of these mounts would be incredibly sturdy and may well outlast the tree it's connected to. Ordering from PCBWay is dead simple. You upload your design files, select the options you'd like to go with, including a vast material choice, process choices, finishing options, and more, and get an instant quote. Then PCBWay's expert engineers will double check your design to ensure the manufacturing process will all go well and let you know if you should tweak anything in your design. Then they'll finalize your price, you can place your order, and they'll set to work on manufacturing your part or PCB and ship it right to your door. Simple as that. I've been using PCBWay for years and I've always been impressed by their services. I'm using their services for a whole bunch of this year's Christmas show parts, including PCBs and CNC machine mounts for the biggest prop in our show. If you need parts or PCBs to finish your own project, check out PCBWay at the link in the description below. Thanks again to PCBWay for making this series possible. Once I'd figured out how to mount the lights, I needed a way to mount a battery and light controller to the tree. For the controller, I've gone with a nice simple WLED controller with a built-in relay to disable the power output. We'll be connecting these to our show controller wirelessly over a distance of about 20 meters, which is a bit of a recipe for disaster, but my plan is to install an outdoor access point at the front of the house to give us a solid connection. We'll see how it goes. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. We've gone with a 12 volt setup for our pixel lights on the rest of the show. And in order to try and stick with that system, I've gone with 12 volts for these floodlights too. In order to power them, I'm gonna need a battery of some description. And when looking around for what batteries would work best for this application, I kept coming back to these. These Milwaukee M12 tool batteries are portable, rugged, and have plenty of output to run the lights. Plus, I already have a bunch. 
They're also easy to charge, have their own protection circuitry built in, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery should have enough juice to run these lights at full power for about two hours. Considering these particular lights will be used very sparingly in the show, we should get a few nights out of them without issue. Then we'll just need to jump on a ladder every few days and swap in some spares. I also found a model for a battery receiver I can use as the basis for my own battery box. The batteries in WLED controller are obviously not waterproof, so I needed some kind of enclosure. I couldn't find anything that suited my needs perfectly, so I grabbed the good old parametric rugged case model from Witty on printables and tweaked it into my own waterproof enclosure. I built in some mounting points for my Milwaukee battery receiver, added some relief for routing the cables and some spots for waterproof cable glands on the sides. And there's room under the battery for our WLED controller. Sorted. floodlight mount I'm going with PETG. It's easy to print on the Core 1 and though it's not UV stable, it should be fine in the sun for a couple of months, especially because it'll be shaded by the tree it's mounted to. The other advantage of PETG over materials like ASA or ABS is it's much less likely to warp. And since our waterproof case has quite large flat surfaces, this made it way, way easier to print. I stuck some self-adhesive foam rubber to the back of each module to ensure it didn't slip on the tree, threaded them all onto my straps, went down the road to a local park and wrapped them around a tree to test it all worked. The lights old daisy chain from the battery box, which of course has our WLED controller, and then loop back around to the battery box on the other side to sort of close out the loop. This should mean that each floodlight gets pretty similar voltage. This tree is very different from the ones we're gonna be using, so you don't really get the full effect, but it's enough to test that it all works. We'll keep the full effect kind of in our pocket for the big reveal video at the end of the series. I pulled the straps fairly tight for our testing and they seem to hold well, but we'll probably need to check these every few days the whole time we're running the show. The whole assembly is not particularly heavy, but I imagine the straps will stretch a little over time. We might upgrade to some small ratchet straps if these friction straps don't hold up. With WLED installed, you can use these as is without installing them as part of a larger light show. The WLED app allows you to play with effects and colors just with your phone. For our light show, I'm using them with Falcon Player and X lights to make them part of the, the wider show, which of course, is also an option for you. Speaking of which, if you're in the Melbourne area and you'd like to join us for the opening night of this year's light display on the 29th of November, head to the link in the video description to find the details. There'll be a casual free sausage sizzle at the park across the road before the show kicks off in the evening. Everyone is welcome, young and old, so if you can make it, I'd love to see you there. And thanks to the guys at Prusa, we'll be giving away a Prusa Mark IV S to whoever finds me and tells me about an awesome project they'd use the printer for. I'll pick my favorite and you can take home your brand new printer. I'll also have a couple of runner-up prizes and stockpot project kits to give away, so make sure to come say hi. If you can't make it, the show will be running all the way to the new year, so you'll be able to check it out anytime. I tested the battery life with a 5,000 milliamp hour M12 battery, and as expected, they lasted about two hours at full brightness. I'll show you more of their final installation and integration into the light show later on in the series, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. I've made all the files for this project available over on Printables if you wanna make one of these for yourself. And links to all the products I've used are in the blog post for this video. Let me know if you do make some of these. I'd love to see how you use them and how they look. There are some more projects coming in this series, including our biggest addition to the show this year. But not quite yet. 
Get subscribed so you don't miss it. If you like this video, leave it a like. If not, let me know why. And if you have some time, check out this video here. YouTube thinks you'll enjoy it. Thanks heaps for watching. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.